For those who um, have joined us, Devin is the creative director and owner of Devin Grace Interiors. And we've worked together with Devin on a couple of our projects in the city. You've done some models for us and we love your work. And we have some questions for you about, um, you know, interior design for single family homes, condos, apart rental apartments, you know, we work with yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um, so I thought we could dive in and talk about interior design trends that apply to both renters and homeowners. You mm -hmm. recently wrote about wallpaper yeah. <laughs> is here favorite. to stay. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what wallpaper trends are you seeing right now? Um, honestly, I guess just in terms of a trend, I think people are just wallpaper itself. Like people are like open to it again. Um, I think it had a bad reputation for a long time where people thought it was like, you know, something from their grandma's house, like very floral, but now there's so many amazing uh, wallpaper designs that are coming out. People are getting a lot more creative uh, with hand painted designs. I think people are just kind of looking to incorporate, or at least what I'm seeing and what we're incorporating in projects is like, wallpapers that have kind of this like um, either a really elegant look that kind of, you know, it adds a dramatic impact to a space or something that's like a little more personal. Um, like Relativity Textiles is a wallpaper designer that I love. She does all hand painted designs and it's just, um, it's like a cool personal way to just add a piece of art into your space that actually becomes part of the space and just uh, has a bigger impact. So I think, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but I think <laughs> wallpaper in general is the trend. I think that's, um, hopefully it's here to stay. That's what, you know, we're never going to stop putting it on projects, <laughs> but I think um, it's just, it's great that people are open to it again. And now that it is available in more uh, kind of removable applications, it's great for rentals as well. So you can uh, get rid of your white walls and, you know, add some personality to the space. I would have loved that back when I was renting. It would have been great. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. So um, as it relates to wallpaper and uh, rental apartments, how yeah. easy or difficult is that for a renter to do? Do you have any tips? I for, think it's for pretty the easy. Renters out the removable. Yeah, I think the removable ones are pretty um, easy to install. I have friends that have done them uh, in their own homes. Um I haven't done it personally, but um, I don't think you need a professional paper hanger. I think it's more of like there's an adhesive on the back and you can install it and then it comes off with no residue left behind. Um, so it's a great, great product, great uh, invention. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we've seen some creative things. Some of our clients have sent us photos of their apartments that they've decorated and they definitely yeah. have used the the temporary wallpaper and it makes a huge difference I think sometimes it people does. are afraid of renting an apartment because they think it's going to be cookie cutter and just a white box yeah. but there's so much you can do yeah totally and it's yeah. easier than having to repaint it before you move at the end too. <laughs> absolutely just just it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so what does it entail to work with an interior designer like what's the process well, uh, the process definitely varies from firm to firm. Uh, it depends on whether you're working with, a, you know, a smaller, like a solo designer or a bigger firm. We're kind of a medium sized firm. We're nine people today. So um, we, we kind of have a very uh, specific process that we've established over the years where we really want to get to know um, the client's personal style and aesthetic and curate a design that then reflects them. So we're not necessarily pushing our own design aesthetic. We definitely have an aesthetic, like we're definitely more modern, uh, kind of clean lines. I think that's what people come to us for. But at the same time, you know, we're open to um, flexing and getting out of our comfort zones and um, <laughs> pushing the design a bit. So so yeah, so we always start a project by really getting a solid um, understanding of the client's core aesthetic and, and design and then uh, bringing that out in the design. So and, and different design firms, you know, present or work different ways. Um, we use a lot of digital platforms to kind of present our work uh, to clients. Um, and then, yeah, again, it, it, the process from there kind of evolves to a lot of designers uh, that are more full service will kind of oversee the procurement process and just make the move in process, uh, which is a nightmare, just make it easier for you <laughs> so that you can just walk in and kind of have your home 
set up and your furniture installed and your artwork on the wall. Um, I think that in my mind, that's kind of like the biggest value add. It just like makes your life so much easier. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. A- anytime you can make someone's life easier, I yeah. think it's much yeah. appreciated. And especially yeah. walking into like a completely yeah. done space is yeah. so much more Agreed. exciting than like piece by piece by piece. Yes. By piece. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Chicago, do many renters work with interior designers? Have you found that? Yeah. Um, I would say definitely. When, so we are, as our business has evolved, we've kind of gotten into a more luxury uh, ballpark, I guess, for budgets. So we don't get as many renters calling. You're us big DJs. time now. You're big time now, Devin. No. It's all good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean it. I don't mean it that way. I just, we don't, um, I would say a few years ago, we had a lot of uh, rent- renters uh, reaching out to us because like you said before, you do want to make the space feel like your own. Um, and, you know, not just feel like a temporary place. You want to make it feel comfortable because a lot of people do stay in rental for, for years. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we've worked with a few, uh, Ashley, actually uh, commenting. <laughs> she's one of the renters that we worked yeah. with a few years ago. Um, she's great. So, yeah. So there's definitely ways um, to use a designer in, rent- in rentals. There's key pieces that you can kind of be strategic about um, when you're buying so that they can relocate to a, to a new home. Um, Pieces like big, big sectionals or dining tables, those are like a little risky because you don't know exactly what the layout is going to be in your next place and it's a little harder uh, to translate maybe. But uh, other things like area rugs, you know, accent pieces, accent chairs, coffee tables, beds, those are all pretty safe things to um, invest in and then take with you. And of course, artwork and accessories, you should yeah. collect those over the years and, and bring those with you too. So. Yeah, good pieces you'll have for your whole life. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, All right, so now let's move to renovations. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So what are you seeing in renovations um, as it relates to, I mean, I think we're in a really interesting time right now that people are spending so much time at home and they're kind of reevaluating their space and they're thinking like, oh, well, you know, how can I either live here or do things differently or find something else that best fits what I'm looking for. So what kinds of renovations like do you see adds the most value? Is it, is it yeah. the kitchen? Is it the bathroom? What's going on these days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's a good question. I think these days, um, especially with COVID, but even before COVID, especially like in, in, you know, city homes, uh, places where you may not necessarily have you know, a crazy amount of square footage, you have to just get kind of creative with how to use it. So what we're seeing a lot of is, um, or what we're trying to do with our designs is just think, um, you know, double purpose or double. So for example, we did a condo renovation actually right before COVID. um, And now in hindsight, it's like, kind of thank God that we did this, but they, we incorporated a kitchen with an open floor plan that has um, an office kind of workspace integrated into that um, on the backside. So um, it's a space where the family can, you know, be, they can, the parents could be cooking a meal or something while the kids are doing homework. And yet they're still in this open environment kind of space where they're all together. Um, So I think that's kind of what we're starting to see. A lot of people are, like you said, they're home more. um, Mm -hmm. So they want to be able to have kind of dedicated spaces in the home that are functional and um, yet still feel like thought out uh, and can maybe do double duty and and can be, you know, a space where you can work during the day, but you're still uh, with your family and it still kind of converts into uh, more of a lounge space or more of a hangout space. I don't know. So yeah, How that's great. Yeah, that you that you that you do that. I know flex spaces. I know their timing was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, with just everything that's going on. I think what we're seeing that people are requesting so much of is that like home office space, yeah. um, rooms that can pull double duty, and just yep. ways to be creative in your home environment right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So what renovation trends do you think are here to stay? And maybe what's a fad? <laughs> um, 
That's a good question. I guess the most like controversial one I'm seeing out there is the white kitchen. Everybody seems to think like white kitchens are going away. Um, I still love a white kitchen. Um, I, I, I'm on the fence about whether or not that's a trend. Um, we just did a renovation in our own home and did a, you know, primarily white kitchen as well. But um, I think something that people are starting to do now and whether this is, you know, a, a result of people thinking that the all white kitchen is going away or what. Um, but I think a lot of people are starting to incorporate more wood tones uh, mm -hmm. into designs. I think that's, again, something that like back in the day when it was always like cherry cabinets or, or that really yellow oak, um, I think that started to feel a little dated to people. So people trended more towards painted cabinets and brighter colors. But now I'm seeing woods kind of come back, but it's more of a like ashy tones, kind of lighter natural um just clear stains really really kind of soft woods mm -hmm. um we're seeing that a lot we're incorporating that a lot into our designs um i would say almost every kitchen that we're doing now has some kind of wood cabinet or um you know just element kind of incorporated into it which i'm thrilled about because i love seeing kind of natural elements mm -hmm. be present in a space i think it adds a lot of warmth um so yeah, hopefully, again, hopefully that's not a trend. Hopefully that's here to stay, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the white kitchen doesn't, I love a, I love I know. a, a I, clean white kitchen. I don't know. I do too. Maybe I'm I do old too. fashioned, but yeah. No, I do too. I think, I think, I don't think it's a trend. I think that's here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, so anyone who's joined, feel free to, you know, ask a question, but I have a couple more. So I've been hearing that with the pandemic, there have been some construction and renovation delays just, you know, because of COVID safety protocol, things are behind. Yeah. Um, what's your, what's your take on that? What's your experience so far? Um, honestly, I think the, there are some, delay, like there's, some manufacturers where we've had some hiccups like Baldwin um, door hardware, you know, we, they've been kind of back ordered on a lot of things. There are certainly some things, especially if you're ordering like tile from overseas or something like that. I think over the summer, there was a big delay. Um, things are picking back up now. I think the biggest delay right now, honestly, is everybody seems to be doing work. So the delay mm -hmm. is um, talent and, you know, bodies that can do the work. So I think contractors are all pretty booked up. Um, designers seem to be pretty booked up. So yeah, just the, the trades needed to kind of do the work. Um, I think there's probably a backlog there, um, which definitely causes delays. Um, but uh, yeah, I think materials, materials seem to be picking back up again. Hopefully it doesn't slow down too much. On the other side, furniture is kind of all over the place. Um, but, you know, we're seeing with where lead times, one day they'll tell you one thing, the next day it's something completely different. Um, so I would say the more unpredictable side of the industry right now is the furniture pipeline. Yeah, we're trying to buy a new couch for our yeah. family home because we sit on it all the time. Yeah, and yeah. My children are large now and they don't fit. We all don't yeah. fit anymore. So <laughs> we're getting quoted ridiculous timelines yeah, and we're I like know. uh okay I guess spring we'll get it's, a new couch it's crazy. but you know what you might get surprised we have some pieces that weren't supposed to arrive until December and they're getting delivered on Monday so it's oh, like all right all over the place for good and for bad so hopefully, okay. hopefully it turns around yeah <laughs> basically just go for what you want you'll be happy yeah. in the end like yeah it's, it's however long you're waiting is temporary to how long yeah. you'll get to enjoy it for. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So we, we have a question. Yeah, we have a question. So what is your approach to decorating for Christmas coming up here um, for a rental? Like, do you keep it minimal aesthetic? Do you go all in and get that big tree? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I'm probably the worst person to ask this. I we haven't decorated our place ever <laughs> in six okay. years um so yeah so I'm probably the first person to ask this question too um I would say I mean probably keep it simple if you want a tree go for a tree yeah why not um if you have space for it um I've never wanted to deal with just the headache of the pine needles everywhere so we avoid it um but I think, I think there's things you can do, like bring in, you know, new pillow covers. That's like an easy um, way to kind of add some decor. And then it can also be packed up and stored easily. That's also my biggest, like, pet, not pet peeve, but my biggest, like, 
hindrance, I guess, to decorating for holidays is I don't want to store anything the rest of the year. So we, again, just avoid it. But I think pillow covers, um, table runners, things like that, that can just fold up and tuck away. Those are probably the best for if you're living in the city in a smaller rental. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Follow up question. Not about the holidays, but <laughs> Ashley wants to know when buying a place and wanting to hire Devin, can she help vet out places for the best place to buy and fix up <laughs> in addition to hiring a luxury living broker to help yes, you find yeah, yeah. that place? <laughs> but do you, will you come? I, I think I've seen this on your Instagram before, but will you actually yeah. go out and tour? Uh, yeah, locations. We've, yeah, we've done that before. We, um, we have clients that will reach out to us before buying a place um, and kind of, ask us like hey what would make sense what's possible to do here um we don't go on like a whole day of showings with people necessarily or, or weeks of show but once once clients have narrowed it down to a few that they're kind of serious about um we're always happy to kind of weigh in and um give some advice on on what can be done and and what it would look like for the budget and what it would add to and kind of weigh that with the purchase price yeah cool yeah absolutely mm -hmm. And we've got a couple of brokers on our team who are very, very into interior design as well. So um, yeah. they can help give you some ideas and then bring Devin in for for the yeah. actual work. But it <laughs> <laughs> uh, seems like a lot of our brokers are just very into interior design. And so they're always yeah, happy to, uh, to help with um, having some vision. So um, we had a question here about it. I think it was back when we were talking about um, – maybe fads and trends. Someone asked mm -hmm. about mixed metals in the kitchen. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, typically what we, so my rule of thumb, usually um, if you're, you know, throughout a house or a home, um, we try to keep it to no more than three metals. Otherwise it just starts to feel a little discombobulated. Um, unless you're kind of going for like intentionally doing this like mixed metal theme. Um, so with that, I would say in the kitchen, keep it to two, um, max. So yeah, I, I, we mix more than that. So for example, well, my kitchen right now I'm looking at is stainless steel and black. Um, so we mm -hmm. have the two kind of balanced out. Um, we do that a lot. We'll, we'll, you know, balance out black and brass or polished nickel and brass. Um, I think, especially when you got bigger kitchens, mixing it up makes sense. Um, but again, don't, don't go more than two. <laughs> Usually what we'll do is kind of like apply a rule. So like cabinet hardware, um, is all one metal and then plumbing fixtures are another metal. So you can kind of balance it out that way. Same thing in bathrooms. If you do plumbing fixtures, you know, in a polished nickel, but you want to incorporate some brass, you can do the light fixtures and the towel rods, you know, in the brass, and then you kind of balance it out that way. Cool. Yeah. Um, Ultimate Millwork is asking, you mentioned wood tones are making their way back. Do you think the same will apply for interior doors having a natural wood look? Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah, if you have the budget, <laughs> do it. I love it. Natural <laughs> wood look. Um, Someone asked about, I'm going to totally <laughs> say this wrong, Sh shiplap? Oh, Ultimate Work also asked about shiplap. I'm not familiar. What is shiplap, Seven? <laughs> shiplap? Yeah. Shiplap is what Chip, Chip and Joanna Gaines put on every project, pretty much. It's oh, like the okay. paneling <laughs> where you kind of get like the thicker paneling with the lines. Um, I think it has the time and a place. I think, you know, we're doing a basement project right now that has a, it's in Michigan. So it has like a very modern farmhouse aesthetic to it. Um, so we're incorporating shiplap there. Um, anytime you're doing a modern farmhouse project, I think shiplap fits in. Uh, but other than that, we don't use it a ton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think that is all the questions that we covered from my end and doesn't look like we have any more from our audience um, who's awesome and has been following <laughs> along. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you so much awesome. for, for coming yeah. on. It's so good to see you. I, I know you. it's so I good to see you. I know it's so sad. It's like it's digital now, but one, I of know. These days. one of these days we'll see each other again, but it's always fun I to know. come on here and chat and thanks for yeah. joining us and thanks sharing for your perspective. Of yeah. course. All right. Well, have a good evening and we'll you talk too. soon. 
All right. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Amy.